In his first journey to the Americas, sailing around what would become the Dominican Republic, Christopher Columbus claimed that he spotted three mermaids off the prow of his ship, writing that he saw three mermaids, but they are not as beautiful as they are painted, though to some extent they have the form of a human face. It is almost certain that what Christopher Columbus was seeing were sea cows, and this is a misidentification made by many sailors all over the world for many years. Although the stories of lonely sailors mistaking manatees as ladies of the sea is quite funny, with the aid of rum and seeing them from a distance, you can see why they may have done this. Sea cows do have a defined head that they can move independently from their body, but their bottom half is very fish-like. But this is just because, like other marine mammals, like whales and seals, they are descended from an ancient land animal that adapted for life in the water. The historical association with mermaids that these animals have had inspired the sea cow's scientific name, as they are known as the Cyrenians, named after the sirens in Greek mythology. Whereas whales are most closely related to hoofed animals, like cows and deer, and seals are most closely related to bears and weasels, the majority of DNA studies have shown that the closest relatives of the Cyrenians are the elephants, or proboscideans, which is the name of elephants and their close relatives. The Cyrenians and the elephants are members of an ancient group of mammals known as the Tetatherians, named because these animals originated among the African coast of a narrow seaway named the Tethys, that used to lie between Africa and Eurasia over 35 million years ago, before the continents had connected. Cyrenians and elephants are the only surviving Tetatherians, but they used to be more diverse and numerous. There was the Arsenoitherium, that were large and superficially rhino-like animals, but had two horns attached to their skull instead of one, and also possibly a large group of aquatic animals known as the Desmostylians, which were highly unusual semi-aquatic mammals that had forward protruding tusks at the front of their mouth, and at the back had cylindrical teeth bunched together which is very different from any living mammal. Because of their strong genetic link to the Tethotherian animals, we know that Cyrenians must have originated in Africa, but whereas some Tethotherian animals like proboscideans have a fossil record in Africa dating back to 50 to 60 million years ago, Cyrenian fossils are notably missing, and up until fairly recently, the earliest fossil evidence of these animals was not actually in Africa, or from the Old World at all. One of the oldest Cyrenians in the fossil record was called Peso Siren, that is actually known from prehistoric Jamaica about 48 million years ago. Peso Siren was about the size of a big pig, and its skull and ribs were not too different to a manatee or dugong, but it was a quadruped. It was a sea cow on legs. However, it is known that the creature would have spent a lot of its time in aquatic environments, because it had very thick and heavy ribs that would have provided ballast in the water, like a hippo, that are naturally almost entirely submerged, and its fossils have been found in association with other aquatic animals, like crocodilians. So Peso Siren shows a key transitional form for Cyrenians adapting to life in the water, and lived in Jamaica. And Peso Siren wasn't even the only Cyrenian known from Jamaica at this time, as there was also Prorestomus, that was similarly a four-legged primitive sea cow, showing that they had a strong presence in the New World at this time. Rather confusingly, for the longest time, these Jamaican fossils were the oldest Cyrenians known, until 2013 when part of his skull was discovered in Tunisia from 50 million years ago. A skull may not seem like much, but it was enough to know that Cyrenians were living in North Africa at this time. Plus, the fossil had preserved its ear canal, that had been specialised for life in the water. The semicircular ear canals allow you to sense your head movements, and allow you to keep balance. Aquatic animals like whales and sirenians have them adjusted in a different way to allow them to keep balance in the water. Once animals have made this change, it is like a path of no return. So it is known that they were at least semi-aquatic, although due to the time the fossils were dated to, it was probably more similar to the legged sirenia found in Jamaica than it was to modern sea cows. Although this discovery clears up some of the mysteries about Cyrenian evolution, it also opens up more questions, like how Cyrenians were able to travel across an ocean to the Caribbean. The most likely explanation is that they swam, although it may be hard to imagine that Cyrenians were able to cross an entire ocean when they had not yet developed their most aquatic features and still had legs, there are things to consider, one being that the Atlantic Ocean was much smaller during the Eocene and the Americas would have been much closer to Africa. 
but also whales were able to make a similar journey to the Americas when they still had legs. 43 million years ago, the fossils of a whale called Peregocetus were discovered in Peru, and Peregocetus had legs as well. Like Cyrenians, whales came from the Tethys Ocean, their earliest fossils being known from Pakistan and India. This means that Peregocetus would have had to have made a similar journey across the Atlantic as the Jamaican Cyrenians. Only the earliest evidence of whales in the Americas was actually from 5 million years later, so by going by the fossil record, sea cows actually got there first. By about 45 million years ago, Cyrenians started to become much more aquatic and spread out around the world. One of these being Sababe Siren, that was known from Spain, that had legs, but unlike Peso Siren, had a large tail and most likely started swimming by undulating like a whale, like modern sea cows do. It also had considerably reduced hind limbs, to the point that they were probably no longer able to go on land, like modern sea cows. As the Eocene drew to a close about 35 million years ago, came the appearance of the Dugongidae family, that contains the modern day Dugong. Despite these animals now only being known from Asia and the Indian Ocean, the fossils of the earliest Dugonidae, Calpitherium, have actually been found in Europe. Calpatherium's back legs had been reduced down to a small bit of bone that wouldn't have been visible on the animal, showing that by about 30 million years ago, sea cows had taken on their familiar form. It's around this time that manatees would have evolved from Dugonidae as well, so although they are very similar in appearance, they are actually surprisingly not that closely related to each other, being about as closely related as apes are to monkeys for perspective. The Cyrenians like Sababe Siren, that started to become a lot more aquatic and have reduced limbs, also started to develop a skull that points downwards, which is a feature of modern sea cows because they almost exclusively feed on seagrasses that are below them. This may seem insignificant, but it was very important to their evolution because seagrasses are most likely what forced primitive Cyrenia to become more aquatic. The early Cyrenians probably lived a lot like other large semi-aquatic mammals, like hippos or water buffalo, that had a general diet of different plants that grow around rivers and lakes, but specialising to eat seagrass would have allowed them to take advantage of a resource that other herbivorous mammals couldn't get to, creating a selective pressure for Cyrenians to become more aquatic so they could get out into deeper water and shallow coastal environments. Seagrasses may seem like a fundamental part of the ocean's ecosystems, but in the grand scheme of things they're not actually that old, and most likely date back to the late Cretaceous meaning that they only predate sea cows by about 10 to 20 million years, so there was an open niche waiting to be taken advantage of. But with the advantages of an easily accessible and abundant food source, came the disadvantages of being a fully aquatic herbivorous marine mammal, as Cyrenians have had to overcome challenges not faced by carnivorous marine mammals or herbivorous land animals. Water is a better conductor than air, and so aquatic animals lose warmth to their surroundings more easily than land animals. Marine mammals like seals and whales counter this by having incredibly thick insulative blubber. It may look like sea cows are the same because of their large bodies, but they actually have comparatively low body fat, and they are so big because they need large intestines and a large stomach to extract the nutrients out of the plants they eat, limiting the space for a thick blubber layer. Cyrenians have overcome this by being incredibly round, reducing the surface area and therefore the speed they can lose heat, but also by living exclusively in tropical and semi-tropical waters. But it wasn't always this way. As little as 250 years ago in the 1700s, there used to be a Cyrenian that lived in the oceans of Alaska, Russia and Japan, called the Stella Sea Cow. The Stella Sea Cow was most closely related to the dugong, and would have looked fairly similar, only was about 9 meters long, and would have weighed more than an elephant. It most likely adapted its large size to reduce its surface area to volume ratio and conserve heat. It had a much smaller head compared to its body size and was reported to naturally float at the top of the water eating from kelp forests. In order to access the shallow waters where the kelp grew, they had thick and rough skin to give them protection against rock and ice. Unfortunately, because the creatures were slow moving and easy to spot, they were wiped out from overhunting about 20 years from when they were first discovered by Europeans. Unfortunately, extinction was the story for the vast majority of Cyrenians, that now only have four species remaining, making them far rarer and less diverse than the other marine mammals like whales and seals, which sometimes makes us forget that they are a completely separate group of marine mammals that made the journey from land to water on their own. 
Thank you for watching. A big thank you goes out to all my patrons. If you enjoy content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.